Sean William Scott is a familiar name to every viewer who grew up in the 90s. While his name may not have initially sparked any associations, as soon as you mentioned that he played Stiefler in American Pie, everyone knew who you were talking about. However, as much as the role of a young party goer was a powerful boost to Scott's career, it also became a curse for him. Even today, many people still associate the actor with Stiefler, despite more than 20 years having passed since the release of the film. In this video, I will tell the story of how Sean William Scott landed the role in American Pie and what happened to his career afterwards. Scott had always wanted to become an actor, so after a brief stint in college, he packed up his things and moved to Los Angeles. Like many aspiring actors, his first job was a commercial shoot. His debut film role was a brief appearance in Born Into Exile, and he also managed to appear in a music video. All of these events took place in 1997, and by 1999, he landed the role that would change his life. On July 7, 1999, American Pie was released and became a box office smash. Despite its $11 million budget, the film grossed $235 million at the box office, and the actors who played the main roles in the movie became international stars overnight. However, it was Sean William Scott who became the biggest star of the film. Despite the fact that according to the creators of the film, the main role belonged to Jason Biggs, around whom the entire plot of the film revolved. It was Stiefler played by Scott who became a favorite among audiences. It's even more surprising that Scott earned only $4,000 for his standout role, which, as the actor himself admitted, he spent even before the film was released. It's clear that his modest salary was due to the fact that Scott was an unknown actor at the time, and no one could have predicted that his supporting character would become such a beloved figure among audiences. In 2000, he starred in the thriller Final Destination, which proved to be a box office success, grossing $112 million. That same year, Shan appeared in Todd Phillips' film Road Trip, which was another commercial success, earning $119 million at the box office with a budget of $16 million. Additionally, in 2000, Sean also starred in the fairly successful comedy Dude, Where's My Car? Alongside up-and-coming actor Ashton Kutcher, all three projects released in the same year were profitable and brought studios a decent profit. Hollywood studios unanimously believed that Scott was the next big comedy star, capable of generating hundreds of millions of dollars in box office revenue based solely on his presence. Therefore, the next logical step for Sean was to work on a big-budget project. Sean was invited by Ivan Reitman, the creator of Ghostbusters, to play one of the main roles in Evolution, a sci-fi comedy film with an astounding budget of $80 million. Despite high hopes, the movie failed to perform well at the box office and was met with a lukewarm reception from audiences. The film only managed to earn $98 million worldwide, falling short of the required collection of approximately $200 million to break even. Scott moved on from this failure quickly when the second part of American Pie was released a few months later. The movie was just as successful as the first, and the actors began receiving millions in royalties. Scott tried to find his place in Hollywood outside of American Pie. After the failure of Evolution, the actor found himself involved in an even more unsuccessful project called Stark Raving Mad. The movie's box office results were just terrible, bringing in only $167,000. It's worth noting that this film was the actor's first attempt to move away from his comedic roles and into more dramatic. However, judging by the movie's reviews and box office earnings, it seems that nobody appreciated this attempt. That's why when Don Phillips offered Sean to work together again in a more familiar genre by inviting him to star in the film Old School, the actor happily accepted the offer. The movie, which also featured Will Ferrell and Vince Vaughn, did reasonably well at the box office, earning $86 million, and received positive reviews from both audiences and critics. And he immediately received an invitation in a disastrous project called Bulletproof Monk. 
The film was clearly aimed at replicating the success of the Rush Hour released five years earlier, but it didn't even come close to matching the martial arts comedy with Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. The film earned only $37 million at the box office, with a budget of almost $80 million including marketing, and audiences unanimously named Bulletproof Monk one of the worst films of the year. Despite this setback, Scott didn't give up trying to establish himself as a blockbuster star, and in 2003, he appeared in The Rundown, co-starring with Dwayne Johnson, who was not yet as popular as he is today. Having only one film under his belt, The Scorpion King, which was not very successful. To many viewers, he was still just another wrestler trying to conquer Hollywood. Despite positive reviews from both critics and audiences, The Rundown earned only $80 million at the box office with a budget of $85 million. This failure finally made Sean say goodbye to blockbusters and return to more modest comedies. After a series of failures, the third installment of American Pie once again became a box office hit, coming to the actor's rescue. The following year was as successful as it was unsuccessful for him. First, he joined the sequel to Ice Age, voicing the opossum named Crash. The animated film, with a budget of $80 million, grossed $660 million worldwide and finally convinced 20th Century Fox to create a franchise that includes five pots and several spin-offs. However, 2006 was mod by the actor's unsuccessful project, the action movie Southland Tales, in which he starred again with Dwayne Johnson. This time, their joint works failure was more painful. Not only did almost no one watch the movie, given its box office of $374,000, but even those who saw the film were, to put it mildly, unimpressed. This applies to both critics and audiences. The subsequent projects, such as Mr. Woodcock, The Promotion, and Role Models, also did not gain popularity with audiences, earning a total of $34 million at the box office, of which only the film Mr. Woodcock earned $33 million. Overall, the actor's run in major movies came to an end in 2011 to 2012. He earned his largest paycheck of $5 million for his role in American Reunion, and subsequently delivered what may be considered his most unforgettable performance outside of the American Pie franchise in the comedy film Go On. He played a character local hockey team recruits him as a Go On. Despite only earning $7 million at the box office, the film was warmly received by both audiences and critics. Everyone unanimously praised the well-developed characters and, of course, highlighted Scott's performance, whose character was deeper and more mature compared to his previous roles. The role of the Enforcer was able to do what the actor's previous roles could not, namely, distance associations with Stiefler. Sean's further appearances on screen were in B-movies, which, if they were shown in theaters, earned only a few tens of thousands of dollars and were then taken off the release. Realizing that his big screen projects were not going as well as he had hoped, Scott decided to move to television and appeared in the third season of the series Lethal Weapon, replacing previously fired actor Clayne Crawford. However, despite many agreeing that Sean's appearance was beneficial to the show, it didn't do much for the ratings, and the third season ended up being the last. Despite his short-lived television career, it wasn't limited to just one project. In 2022, the series Welcome to Flatch aired on Fox, in which the actor played a priest, and this role is currently the final one on his list of projects. Despite his rapid rise early in his career, Sean Williams Scott never managed to establish himself at the top of the Hollywood Olympus. But what's even more upsetting for the actor is that he couldn't shake off the association with the character of Stiefler.